Okay, let's understand proportions. I'm going to try to teach you the basics of proportions in about 10 minutes. That's the goal of this particular video. And there, there's basically two things I want to teach you. One, I want to define what a proportion is, and I want you to understand that. And then two, I want you to understand the basic steps to solve a proportion. So what we're looking at right here is a proportion. So if you know what, uh, why this is a proportion, or if you know what the definition of a proportion is, go ahead and put that into the comments section. And if you know how to solve this, uh, go ahead and put your answer into the comments section as well. Of course, I'm going to cover all of this in just one second, but let's just think about it. This word proportion, we certainly uh, use this in our everyday uh, kind of vocabulary, like, oh, something's in proportion with something else, or it's proportional. So we probably already have some intuitive sense of what this word means, but I'm going to give you a specific definition of proportions in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you're having a tough time in mathematics, I'm here to tell you it doesn't have to be that way. I've been teaching math for decades, and uh, I've really been able to help so many students because the way I teach is super clear and understandable. And I really strive to really break things down in non-technical uh, language. So, you know, really try to make math less scary. A lot of you out there are intimidated by math because it is, you know, some of these concepts can be abstract and complex, but it isn't, you know, the way you learn it can be very clear and understandable, but you need the right instruction. And I think I have that right instruction for you. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, and you're struggling in mathematics, I can definitely help you out. Now, if you happen to be preparing for a test that has a math section on it, now some of you out there are, are currently preparing for these tests, uh, but if you're not preparing for one of these tests right now, you will likely be taking a test like this in the future. I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, AccuPlacer, um, CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam. So if you're going off to school or taking any kind of college entrance, college placement, uh, certification test, or trying to get into a particular vocational school, you will have to take a test with a math section on it. I can help you prepare and pass those, uh, those particular tests. If you homeschool, we were just voted number one uh, for middle and high school mathematics. Very proud of this achievement by a major uh, national homeschool publication. Uh, so if you homeschool, you definitely want to check out my homeschool math courses. And if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But if you want to do great in math, one of the first things you need to start doing is start learning how to take great math notes. Okay, so let's get into this. And again, if you um, uh, know what a proportion is, put your definition in the comment section. And if you can solve this particular proportion problem, put your answer in the comment sections as well. But let's get going here. And we're going to first start off with this question, what is a proportion? Okay. Well, in its most simplest term, a proportion is two equal fractions. Okay. Two equal fractions. Okay. So let's make up some fractions that are, are equal to one another. So we'll, we'll get into this uh, problem here in a second when I get into how to solve. But let's uh, say I have 4 over 8. There is a fraction, okay? Now let's think of another fraction, and there's all there's infinite many fractions that are the same as 4 over 8. So 4 over 8, if we reduce that down, that's the same as, as the fraction 1 half. But let's use a more interesting fraction. Let's say 5 over 10, okay? So this fraction right here is equal in value to this fraction, okay? They're, they're both 1 half. We're just using different numbers. So this is a proportion, okay? Two equal fractions. That's what a proportion is. Now, uh, you're probably saying to yourself, well, that's that's it. That's it. That's exactly, you know, <laughs> that's all we need to know about uh, the definition of a, of a proportion. Yes, pretty much so. Okay, so this is a uh, proportion because why is this a proportion, right? Well, here is a fraction bar. So this is a fraction and we're saying it's equal to this fraction. So one fraction equaling to another fraction, not not um, uh, something like this, one plus three fourths, um, or let's say uh, is equal to x over seven. In this particular form, this is not two equal fractions. I would have to kind of fix this up. I could convert this into a proportion, but this in and of itself is not two equal fractions, okay? So when you see one fraction equal to another fraction, we're dealing with a uh, proportion. Let me just leave this right there. 
Okay, so that is a uh, definition of a proportion. Now, I wanted to um, touch base on something. Uh, some of you out there are saying, well, what about rates and ratios? So you're probably studying cha a chapter in your algebra book or whatever math course that you might be taking. And typically, uh, it's rates, ratios, and proportions. Okay, this is a typical name of a chapter when you are studying proportions. Rates and ratios, all these are right here, are fractions. Okay, but they're fractions with particular units of measure. So, like for example, 30 miles uh, per one hour. Okay, this is a fraction, it's 30 over 1 but we're assigning units of measure to it. This happens to be a rate. So when you're studying proportions, you have to learn what a rate is, what type of fractions these are, what's the difference between a ratio and a rate. Again, this is a type of fraction, this is a type of fraction, a proportion is two equal fractions, okay? All right, so let's move on on how to solve proportions, okay? So uh, let's take a look at this right here. 4 over 8 is equal to uh, 5 over 10. Okay, they're both equal to 1 half. Now, the biggest concept that you need to learn when we're talking about how to solve proportions is something called the cross product. And there's some other fancier terms called the means and the extremes, but this is all you need to know. If I cross multiply like so, all right, let me scoot this whole thing up. Let's look at what happens, right? So 4 times 10, all right, 4 times 10, is this equal to 8 times 5? Well, in fact, it is, okay? 4 times 10 is 40, and 40 is the same thing as 8 times 5, which, of course, is 40. So when you have a proportion, when you have two equal fractions, the cross products are equal, okay? So if we want to solve a proportion, we simply just need to do the cross product. We have to go like this, and we have to go like this. So let's go ahead and do that in this particular problem. So 2 times x is what? 2x, and that's going to be equal to 6 times 1, which is what? 6, all right? So this is uh, what we call the cross product, okay? Product is multiplication, and we're doing this kind of crisscross pattern. So let's solve for x. So 2x is equal to 6. We'll divide both sides of the equation by 2. I get x is equal to 3, okay? So let's go back up in this uh, proportion here. We're saying, oh, x must be equal to 3, so if I replace that x with the 3, does this make sense? Okay, let's replace that x with the 3. So this fraction 3, 6, is that the same thing as this fraction 1 half? Yes, it is. Okay, so this is equal to 1 half, and of course, 1 half is, in fact, 1 half. Okay? All right, so that's basically it. Okay, what's a proportion? A proportion is two equal fractions. How do we solve a proportion? The cross product. Okay? All right, let's go down and take a look at this particular example. And we'll wrap up this video. Now, there's a, a lot of additional problems you're going to want to do uh, beyond this about proportions, but this is just the basics of it. But we're going to go ahead and solve this proportion, and we're going to use the cross product. Now, first of all, let's recognize that, it, in fact, it is a proportion. We have one fraction, and it's equal to another fraction. So to solve this proportion, I'm trying to figure out what value of y is going to make this fraction over here, if I replace this y with some number, it's going to make this fraction equal to this fraction over here, one-third. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, we're going to use the cross product. We're going to go this times this is equal to this times this. So 3 times y plus 2, well, I can write it this way, 3 times y plus 2, 1 times 10 is 1 times 10. So now we just need to go ahead and apply some basic algebra skills. So 3 times y plus 2, I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 3 to uh, 3 to y, so it gives me 3y. Three, 3 times 2 is 6. 1 times 10 is 10. So to solve for y, now I need to go ahead and subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. And I get 3y is equal to 4. 10 minus 6 is 4. And to solve for y, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 3. And there you go. y is equal to 4 thirds is the answer. So if I was to go back up here and put a 4 thirds in there, replace this y, and then do all this kind of um, simplification, I would get a fraction equal to 1 third, okay? This would work out, but I'm gonna spare you the pain of actually checking this answer right now, but you need to just trust the process. When you're solving um, using the cross product, you're finding that particular value such that when you plug it back in, okay, to uh, this particular fraction, you're gonna end up with a fraction that's equivalent to this fraction. So in this case, this whole fraction right here will turn out to be 
equal in value to uh, uh, one third. All right. Okay, so that is proportions in a nutshell. Of course, there's a lot more you want to know about proportions, properties of proportions, and uh, how to solve proportion problems. But again, you know, if you know what a proportion is by definition and how you solve it, then that's a good strong foundation to kind of really get going. So if you understood all of this and you were like, no, I know what a, I knew everything you talked about, then I must go ahead and give you your nice little happy face and A plus and a 100%. Nice job. Matter of fact, I want to throw in a few extra stars so you can feel extra special today. But um, if this video helps you out, if you're like, wow, I didn't know that, well, then go ahead and smash that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my videos. But my best math help always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.